Hello and welcome back to At Any Cost uh, Mets 1870 from GMT. We're at the 2 p.m. game turn stage, which is about halfway through the actual scenario, which finishes at 9 p.m. So thanks for watching this far. Um, I've had some feedback, uh, very kind, um, that uh, my voice is a little bit too soft. So I'm going to try and uh, raise it a little, and hopefully this is uh, clear enough uh, for you ongoing. And apologise about the uh, the quality beforehand. Anyway, to start this turn, I was actually thinking of looking a bit at where we are in the game and the battle as we're going through. Uh, I apologise if there's any um, background noise. Um, we have the windows open here, and there is some traffic around and about. Um, but hopefully, uh, you can hear through that. So, uh, what we have. Uh, Looking at the uh, victory points uh, locations or the victory locations that we have in the scenario, just to run through them quickly again, uh, we have the automatic victory conditions, which are the um, uh, the gold counters, uh, gold cubes here on the bottom uh, of the map here for the French, and then for the town of Gravelot here for the Prussians um, and it really the two sides are nowhere near those at the moment uh, we then have the qualifying uh, victory uh, locations uh, two for the uh, French which is uh, Raisonville and uh, Jarny up here which the French need to hold and if the Prussians don't hold their qualifying uh, victory locations which are the Mars Latour village here and if I just twist the camera a little bit uh, the village here Pizier as well uh, so if one side don't have their their requisite uh, locations then the other side would have a major victory uh, again we're not really close to that really happening um, I think both sides are pretty much uh, uh, got their lo uh, automatic locations uh, fairly settled, uh, their qualifying locations very settled. Um, what we're then left with are the five locations uh, which are in the uh, silver cubes, uh, of which a majority of holding of those at the end of the game will win the game. Um, the uh, one of the cubes slightly out of uh, camera shot just above uh, is uh, the edge road map uh, hex uh, to Verdun. I'll just uh, show that uh, just there at the top of the, uh, the picture. Uh, a long way off and I can't see the Prussians getting anywhere near that. So certainly a French location. And... Uh, Other than that, we have Bruville up here, again, very, uh, very uh, uh, embedded within the French uh, area of the battlefield. And then three locations down here, which I think is where um, the most of the battle has been and uh, will continue to be. Uh, so we have uh, Tronville here, we have Vionville here, and we have Flavigny here. At the moment, the Prussians control these two, the French, that one, they're very much on the front line and uh, the Prussians have only just captured in the last turn this one here. So even with that, there's still a two to three disparity. So really, the Prussians really need to get hold of Flavigny as well or somehow have some sort of breakthrough up here towards uh, Bruville. Uh, holding on to Vionville and Tronville won't be enough for them. So they still have their work cut out for them, and uh, as you can see, uh, if I twist the camera, we've got a lot of French army reinforcements coming along. Um, the infantry guard, uh, Imperial Guard, sorry, ha hasn't uh, hasn't moved. However, the Fourth Corps is on the move. Uh, Imperial Guard will be moving from next turn, and uh, the two. Uh, big core here, the 3rd and the 6th, are uh, already uh, engaged or about to be engaged. So um, I think there's a point in this game where the Prussians really have to have the territory and then defend it uh, rather than be able to 
push through uh, what is a hell of a lot of uh, troops here and they haven't quite got there yet so I suspect a lot of the focus will now be on Flavigny and holding on to Vionville um, and defending uh, across here to stop French encroachment into Mars Latour to get that major victory so that's where we are I just thought I'd go through that uh, uh, from a bigger perspective as the focus has been at uh, this area of the map almost exclusively on the videos and just widen it out um, we have some new reinforcements just about to come on some of the 10th Corps for the Prussians and we have two lots of uh, infantry over here uh, which uh, are the uh, are the uh, elements of the 4th and 3rd Corps to catch up although I think given the out of command rules and movement uh, they're going to take a lot of time to actually get to anywhere near the front line or to their HQs uh, to partake in anything seriously uh, where the Prussians are right on the doorstep um, so yes uh, that's where we are at the moment I just thought we'd, I'd take you through it okay with the uh, Prussian general staff um, Chit, I think we'll activate the Buddenbrock division here uh, going to get uh, attempt to get a hasty works marker in the town and uh, I think we should get this guy, uh, the 12th Brigade, up into the uh, into the forest here uh, for some cover. I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of rifle fire about to hit. Um, yeah, so I think uh, we'll do that. And uh, the roll for hasty works um, that's minus one the roll because of the um, the town there and needs less than or equal to the TCR so we get a six which is good enough so we can get a hasty works marker there I think that's uh, pretty useful puts the TCR up uh, to a nine uh, which is as tough as you can go, I think. Anyway, so that's the Prussian general staff chit. Uh, did consider keeping it, but I thought a uh, good opportunity to use that now. Uh, okay, we have a, our trade tactic. That's interesting. Um, we could keep this, I believe. And um, use it later or I think we can use it now um, oh no we do have to use it now so that's the half movement and two shifts on combat uh, for a single Prussian unit um, I'll have to think about that ok uh, I think it's worth using it um, here in the the town uh, to have a combat uh, with this weakened unit here uh, it's a fairly fairly easy assault um, and we don't need to move so we'll do that with the Avtrex tactic okay so that's easily on the maximum chart of uh, plus 8 or greater um, there's a massive uh, strength point difference and odds difference and there's Prussian infantry and with TCR and of course the half trace tactic two shift as well so it's on the top chart so let's see what the result is oh, and we have uh, a nine uh, a nine gives us a d4 star so we need to take a break test on uh, on this unit and that's a uh, ten which uh, certainly breaks it. So uh, the defender is seen off off one of the adjacent units, and we go back to the chip draw. Uh, and 
we have Persona to Malaise here. So, um, just looking at the chart over here, we have two command events on Bazaine's leadership, which gives us a one to six chance on the dice roll to avoid this um, this chit. So let's roll that. We rolled an eight, so we needed a third chit, uh, which we never had. So then we can place this on an HQ for it not to activate. Um, Hmm. Some uh, options here are possibly the third or the sixth core. Um, the sixth core means that there's no um, activation, so there's no firing, etc. I think that's probably more reasonable. Um, the third core will move, but um, it's not not actually in combat yet. So yeah. We'll place the marker on camera bear for the sixth core. And the next chip is Frossard's second core for the French. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so first thing we note, I'm not sure if I noted it before, is that uh, this low ammo marker stays with this core artillery. That's uh, that's the rule in the game. French core artillery um, doesn't get replenished uh, in a day scenario, and uh, the division and horse artillery can only be replenished when they're in the hex with the HQ. Um, so this has a shift at the moment, and is never going to get any better. Um, so on the we will be in the defensive certainly um, we will uh, do some firing here um, this guy can't really reach anybody and there's some weak firing from here and firing from here down here so we'll do all that okay so we've completed this turn uh, fire didn't do very much um, we uh, we got uh, a shaken result on this uh, infantry unit. Um, it didn't really affect anything else. Uh, we Unfortunately though we got a low ammo marker on this artillery and also on this artillery for doubles rolled. Um, but we did manage to get a hasty net, uh, works marker placed here. So um, yeah, um, not much of a turn but uh, that calls very suffering very badly. We did actually try and rally um, two broken units from the rebuilding box, but both of those failed as well. So, uh, yeah, that's the second call done. Next we have uh, the fourth call, which is way up uh, um, there attempting to catch up with things so I'll get to move those and uh, we'll then get on with the next chip. Right okay <clears throat> so we uh, moved the fourth call uh, the stragglers didn't move at all unfortunately with their out of command and uh, yeah it's uh, slowly getting there but it's uh, a little tricky going through all these uh, minor roads so on to the next chip. It's a cloud of skirmishers as an event chit. Okay, I think uh, we'll use this immediately. Um, it will get us a chance for this infantry unit to fire here through the mountain because, of course, the skirmishers are ahead. Um, so, yeah, uh, we'll do that. Uh, yeah, let's see how that combat goes. Yes, yeah, so we just roll a dice and we need to get equal to or less than the TCR of the firing unit. We don't actually use the combat table. And we roll a 6, which is equal. So therefore, it does indeed cause a shaken result. Great, on to the next one. And uh, unfortunately we get the 6th core, which has the... Uh, 
Bazaine's Malay's marker on it, so therefore it does not have a activation. On we go. Prussian battlefield conditions. I think that will be useful for later. Um, yeah, I think uh, well, uh, well, we may put that onto the aggressiveness chip. So what we don't really want to do is for this chap to um, do his stuff. So yeah, I think we'll put this on the aggressiveness chart. And let's look at the next one. Is the Prussian cloud of skirmishers. And again, I think we'd like to stop that aggressiveness chip working. So we'll place that on the command event track as well. Uh, as we have the option. And now we have the Fortunes of War chip, which requires a dice roll. A dice roll of five. Add a five is to degrade the next chit. So let's pull that out. And that is third de Batonion, um, a chip for the French. Uh, they can place this on a core. It effectively won't move, but it gets bonuses on fire combat and defense on fire combat. However, with the fortunes of war being to degrade the chip, it doesn't actually occur. And we keep going. We get the tenth core for the Prussians, uh, and we get some reinforcements for them coming on. Um, but let's see. We uh, we adjust our our camera there. We have the HQ. A two unit and a cavalry unit here, so let's move this closer. Let's see what we're doing in this part of the. Uh... Yeah, so uh, we're effectively trying to set up a defence in the town here. So uh, I'll just uh, complete that. Okay, so we've uh, moved up the uh, the reinforcements in the HQ pack. Now they'll be in command range for next turn. We put the artillery unit into the village, pull the cavalry back to stay in command. Uh, so a fairly uh, easy activation there. And let's see what comes up next. Okay, so. Where do we go next? We have a command initiative, which may be very useful for the uh, the third core there. We'll keep that as the Prussians, although we could use it on the aggressiveness chip. I think we may well do that. That'll give us almost complete immunity from it. Yep, I think that's the best thing to do. And we have the third core Prussians. Okay, um, so this will be an interesting turn for them. Um, we have a bit more, bit more control from the HQ. Uh, there are two units out of command. Uh, one up here and one over here. The others are in command. Um, looking at the back side, um, we kind of have to keep in aggressive mode to get the range uh, for everything for these guys to be in command. to get rid of some of the shaken markers. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll go to defensive mode. And 
commands, so therefore this is out of command as well. I don't think it's worth doing a, an assault here. That's a fairly proficient unit, and um, we don't want uh, any anything to happen to that unit doing anything rashly. So, right. So I'll uh, sort out this call, and uh, then we'll carry on. Okay. Well, that's that activation completed. Uh, what happened? Uh, we um, did a fire combat from here, which managed to uh, put a, a casualty hit on that unit there. And we moved the artillery up. Um, we removed the low ammo marker from here. The shake and the low ammo marker on this side here. Um, we, uh, which I haven't rolled for yet, of the option with the fourth rally to. Um, to uh, the bring the cavalry for the call back, we roll for that, and that's failed from the broken unit. Um, so we removed these. Uh, then in the outer command step, this cautious allowed for a half a fire here, which actually produced a uh, disruption here with a big roll, um, and then. With the maneuver out of command, we moved here, which puts us back in range, but also uh, available to be fired at. And this unit was frozen and didn't move at all. So, uh, that was the third core step. Um, yeah, that's our two HQs there now, uh, two artillery units there now flanking the village um, right uh, that's that activation and we get the French third corps now to move and uh, this is uh, conducting somewhat of a flanking maneuver heading towards this bridge here so I'll get those moved uh, and uh, Let's see what goes on from there. Okay, so we completed that. Um, the third corps have moved up. We've got an infantry unit just crossing the bridge here. Line of artillery behind uh, and the cavalry on the flank here. And everything else following up. And uh, unfortunately, our core artillery uh, managed a frozen out of command step. So it still hasn't moved. And... Uh, Oh well, um, never mind that unit. Okay, let's carry on. And here we have the uh, what we were waiting for, really, the Prussian aggressive tactics chip for the French. And uh, we have uh, the uh, command track for Prussian aggressiveness here uh, completely covered gives us a 1 to 9 roll to avoid its effects so let's just now roll that Ooh, we got an 8 which is just good enough so the uh, tactics don't happen and uh, fairly close to the end here we have a Moulin a Cafe chit for the French Okay, so this uh, this chip uh, represents some uh, rapid fire from French infantry. Um, however, I don't believe there's any more French infantry to actually be activated this turn, so it's a little bit late. Um, I think what we'll then do is we may put this onto the French offensive spirit track on the command events, which gives us a roll to get the uh, Marshal Bazaine chit, which is the equivalent of the Prussian General Staff chit for next turn, so that gives us a small chance. Um, otherwise, I think that uh, uh, that uh, chit was pretty useless. Okay, uh, 
uh, inspirational leadership for the Prussians here. Um, yeah, uh, we could use that on the command track for uh, the Prussian reinforcements, although there's not a lot of reinforcements yet still to come. Um, an artillery unit, two artillery units and a cavalry unit. So I think um, we need it, really need it there. Inspirational leadership will uh, uh, allow us to do uh, a few things um, which will involve the uh, removal of a morale hit marker and do an automatic rebuild or um, get a, in, uh, a better result on the assault combat by one level. Uh, not a lot of those are going to be useful. Um, we could use it um, where could we use it? Uh, we could use it over here to remove shaken markers. Um, that may well be a thing to do. Certainly on this chap who's not ever going to be in command. Or not for a considerable period of time. So yeah, I think uh, inspira inspirational leadership on that unit there. And we'll remove the morale marker. Okay, and let's move on then. There's only one chip left, which is the French 1st Cavalry Division. And uh, that's way up in Johnny, up here. Just the one hex. And we're going to get that... Um, barreling down the road down towards Mars Latour. Uh, so let's just uh, do that. Okay so that's okay so that's our result there. Uh, the HQ with the horse artillery unit and the light cavalry heading on quickly. It's quite a small division that um, but uh, yeah it's now getting into position. So that's the turn um, get on to the end step which we look at the tracks to start off with uh, the first thing we can do is the uh, roll for the French offensive spirit uh, we need a one or a two to get Brazine's chit into the game for the first time and we roll a ten so he definitely isn't interested uh, the others are um, in turn tracks so they don't uh, need to be rolled on at the moment and um, in the housekeeping we will put the reserve artillery for the French onto oh that's actually there on the 4 p.m. and that's the last activation that's going to come uh, on the board and uh, I think everything else is fairly well clear so yeah that's uh that's the 2 p.m turn thanks very much for watching uh, uh so I, I hope it was a little bit clearer on the audio um i do understand there were a few bangings and scratchings during some of the recording unfortunately that was dinner getting ready um uh sorry about that uh but it was very enjoyable and um yeah we'll uh we shall meet again in the 3 p.m turn thanks for watching